Welcome in then to latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Shaka with me here in the studio. Julianne Laurent is with us as well. We were trying to guess Jürgen Klinsmann's age before we came on. And who was closest? Uh, not our producer who thought he was 64. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think Tielemans Worldie reminded Shaq of the Gerrard winner against West Ham? I, I don't remember Gerrard's winner against West Ham oh, at all, Dan. I, I don't think that, that went down in FA Cup folklore. No, or anything, I, I don't remember anything about it. That was your last ever Premier League, well, not Premier League match, your last, last ever game, game in England. English football, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Moved to MLS right after that. Did you get anywhere near the penalties in the shootout? I don't remember. I save one. I save one. Did you? Yes. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saved one. Right. Only uh, one, though. Let well, we, we, me tell you, I saved all five. <laughs> Come on, then, then you'd be an FA Cup winner. Exactly. You wouldn't be sat here with me. Right. Off. I saved one. <laughs> That's good enough. How much psychologically does Jules think this defeat will affect Tuchel? Did Shaka feel that Casper's save was equally, if not more important, than the goals? Well, let's go psychologically first, Jules. I... I'm not sure this will, I mean it's a big disappointment, clearly he got a lot of things wrong in his, in his tactics and in his team selection as well, but he's not the kind of guy to go be down and go like start doubting and things like that, he knows on Tuesday they can they, they play again against Leicester again and this time he will get things right and they, they, they will go for it, they, they could win and then Top four will look very, very positive for them. So I don't think he's this kind of guy going like, oh, I made a mistake and I'll, you know, I'll, to, it's almost like it hurts so bad that he psychologically goes down into a hole. I think, I think he's, he's more the kind of manager from, you know, talking to him and, and knowing him quite well now of like, okay, I made a mistake. This is a bad one because he really wanted to win this FA Cup, of course. But now I go to the next one and I show that I can sort of redeem myself, pick up the boys and then go again. And I think it's, it's more like that with him than the other way around. How close are you to him, Jules? Can you WhatsApp him? FaceTime? Snapchat? <laughs> you know, he's, he says to me, um, so, every time I have been at his game, physically, one of his games, he's never lost. Either with PSG or since he moved to Chelsea. So every time I see him after a game, and again, he, he's never lost when I was there, he said, make sure you are the next game, make sure you're in Istanbul, make sure you're in Porto, make sure you are Wembley. I could not go today, so he lost today. I was wow. not at the Arsenal game, he lost. I was not at the West Brom game that he lost as well. So every time he sees me, he said, oh, we haven't lost today. Make, make sure, Julian, that you're there next game. So he'd be disappointed I could not make it today. This is how close we are. Wow. You know what I think? I think Jules is the mole who should go back and tell Tuchel what happened in Neymar's parties. Ah, oh, yes. That's how he got <laughs> that That's bomb. why they're so close. That's how he got that bomb. Yeah. Tuchel went to... Tuchel was in Paris for two birthdays, went to one and not the second one. Mm, see, Jules knows. That's a bit weird, him going to the party, isn't it? It is. Like, we wouldn't want the boss coming to our party. Uh, it was buy, if he buys a few drinks, it'd be all right. Well, he won't. Well, then no. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Um, but meanwhile, Casper's safe, Shaq. Oh, I, absolutely vital. I, I mean, it, it's, well, I'll continue on the psychological theme. Obviously, it's, it's different from, you know, scoring a goal and how that changes the momentum of a game. But when you're up against a keeper and, and he produces not one but two saves the way that Schmeichel does, I think it affects how strikers think and how they then try to, to, to get their chances. They normally they, they can't just, you know, shoot from long range. It has to be... They have to work the ball a little bit more that way. So I think it affects how, how the opponents play. It, it's, it's impressive, Castro Michael, as a whole, isn't it? Because you grew up in the shadow of your father. Yeah. The greatest goalkeeper, I think, yes. you know, like you said. I, 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 in, in my opinion, Peter Schmeichel is the best goalkeeper the Premier League has ever seen. So and you're always competitive. You're always, always, always Peter Schmeichel. You have Michael's that son. last name, and, and that is the most difficult thing for, for Castro Schmeichel, which he's spoken about time and time again. Um, as good as he is, as good as he has been for Leicester City, for all the things that he's achieved, the first thing people say to him is, you're not going to be as good as your dad, or right. your dad would have done, which is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Sure. It is ridiculous to, to have that comparison, you know, yes. because of who your dad is. Yeah. Jules, at least your kids won't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Neither will yours. I mean, yours are even further out than mine, what? to be fair. They have to now become sort of TV stars to eclipse me. Oh, imagine living in that shadow. 
As long as they don't dress like you, that's fine oh, with me. Oh, 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 this is nice. Oh, this is nice. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Oh, that was a uh, little blue. That's a little blue juice. That's his, uh, that's his favorite started, jacket, Juice. Uh, it, this is a lovely jacket. Well, okay. You see the inside as well? <laughs> well it's like Check everybody does that. Check everybody does that. Oh, wow. There's no way your boys could live up to that. No. Uh, they might be able to say you two properly, though. <laughs> okay. If Tuchel fails to win the Champions League and finishes out of the top four, does he deserve to be sacked? Blooming egg. Oh, gee. Wow. Oh, oh. Who's this from, Roma? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. He, he's going to get sacked, Jules? What game should we go no. to then? No, and no. I mean, it would be disappointing, of course, lose the FA Cup final, lose the Champions League final or be against City and then not finishing top four. But let's not forget where the club and the team was when he took over in ninth position. Nowhere near as good as what we've seen Chelsea play under him. So the progress is, is obvious to see for everyone, even if there will be disappointing results in the end out of the top four and, and no trophy with two finals played. But still, you, you can't ignore or not see the progress that the team has made, both collectively and individually as well, since he took over. It's, it's, it's pretty pretty remarkable the work he's done in, in the last four and a half months so it will be there next season and I think they will be stronger especially if they've got a good summer in terms of recruitment. Let's talk goalkeeper Shaq. Mm. Should Juventus stick with Szczesny or go for a new goalkeeper in the summer transfer window? Um, I think Juventus need a, a, another goalkeeper and, and that's no... A Donnarumma shaped goalkeeper? Well, I, I think Donnarumma ticks a lot of boxes for, for Juventus for, for, for a number of reasons. Um, I think Szczesny is a very good goalkeeper and, and a lot better than he's given credit for. But he just has this... He, he, every now and then he, he makes an error that just seems totally uncharacteristic of some of his form and that you, you, that you wouldn't expect from a goalkeeper playing for, playing for Juventus. I think Donnarumma um, is a, a pro, I, I think he's already a better goalkeeper and and gets better with the age. So the opportunity is, is there, given Donnarumma's contract, go for him. And I, I think you've got um, a long-term goalkeeper as as you had with with, uh, with Buffon, somebody who'll be there for quite you some love time. Buffon. I, 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 I was just trying to find a way to mention it. Well, exactly. How are you going to do when he retires, Shane? I don't know. Let's go and visit. It's going to be tough. Uh, Jules, who will get the final Champions League spot in League 1? Monaco or Lyon? I think it'd be Monaco. Um, it's obviously all to play for. They only, there's a point between them two with two games to go, but they've been so good in 2021. Niko Kovac doing a, a wonderful job with a, a team with a lot of youngsters who didn't have much experience before this season. And he's, he's made them play with so much intensity, with a lot of energy, great structure tactically on the pitch as well. And, and then on top, you've got Ben Yedder and Kevin Volland who have been wonderful goal scorers and strikers together this season. So I think Monaco will go for it and it'll be a huge disappointment and huge blow for Lyon not to qualify for the second year running for mm. next season Champions League. Uh, Jules, do you see Kamavinga making a move this summer to further develop? He will, he will for sure because he only has one year left on his contract anyway and there's no, there's, there's no way Rennes will keep him and let him go then for free in the summer 2022. So he will move. Uh, that's also what Jonathan Barnett, his, uh, his English agent, wants, oh. wants this summer anyway. So, and and Shaq is old ready agent, too. Jules. Yeah, it was good to Shaka. I mean, he's, he's one of the best. He's, he's right up there with the top, top one. So I can understand why Kamavinga went for him. And by the way, when Kamavinga sort of left his French agent of before, all, all of the big agents were queuing. Barnett, George Mendes, Mino, all of them. And then he picked Jonathan Barnett. They had a good feeling, Kamavinga and his dad with, with Barnett. And listen, it could be PSG who are quite keen. It could be a club like Bayern Munich. He could come to England as well. He's, he's only 18. So even if he goes to a big, big club, I think he still needs a bit of time to, to develop. We've seen this season that at times he's been up and down, really. He had a, a big, deeper form earlier in the season. So let's not expect too much from him, but I think he will move this summer to a, a much better club than Rennes anyway. How did you pick Jonathan Barnett to be your agent? Uh, it was through Brian Lara. Oh, really? He represented Lara. So, uh, Jonathan Barnett started in cricket and boxing. I was actually first... No way. I was actually first footballer to right. sign for... How did he get Lara? I, I don't know. 
that that part I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of. Right. Um, and I, I was actually first footballer on, on Barnes Books. Wow, you started yeah. it all off, Shane. Yes, that's right. Without me, there'd be no Gareth Bale. Well, there would. <laughs> well, Gareth Bale might be That's how I see it. That's how I see it. That's how I'm telling my kids. Ah, oh, dear. Jules can France just loan out a few defenders. On a serious note, they just have too many good quality defenders. Who does Jules rate the most? They do have a lot of good defenders. That is very true. I, you know, I, I don't know how, I don't know why. I think it's, it's just it happens sometimes in certain generation for certain countries. Look, look at England with right backs, for example, which is quite crazy when you think of all the, the top right backs that England have produced in the last five years. Let's say it's the same for us in every position because we were champions, of course, but, but especially uh. at centre half. <laughs> and, and then there's, there's the few that you you've not heard of, or like Maxence Lacroix. At Wolfsburg, who is having a wonderful season in the Bundesliga after moving just from Sochaux in the second division in France last summer. And he's going to be fantastic. Obviously, for Fana, as we saw today, which is incredible. You've got Saliba as well, who's, who's going to come and he's going to be very good despite the sort of full start that he had at Arsenal. Someone like Laporte can't even get to the national team, so he had to, uh, to ask for a Spanish passport to be able to play international <laughs> football. So, this is, this is how good we are in that, in that position. I think Upamecano, Kona. Mate, Kimpembe are the one for the future. Varane is still there for a few for a few years. I think for Fana very soon and Jules Kounde as well will 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 very much very very soon come with the national team. But if you think about it, already that's ten that I've mentioned, and 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 in a squad for for France, you you will only have four really. So I think a lot of them could be disappointed because they might not even ever play for France. Wow, uh, that's it. That's it. We're done. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for more uh, discussing, of course that race for a Champions League place in Italy. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.